Uh, make sure you like the broadcast and share it and subscribe if you don't already. Um, and today during the broadcast, it's we're going to take a look at this little bug friend that I found in the yard. And then we're also going to have just kind of like an open floor of asking anything. I was thinking that for this broadcast, it was going to be about the periodical cicadas, but they haven't arrived yet here. They haven't emerged yet. And um, so that'll probably be next week's broadcast. We'll go check them out. And um, yeah, excited to do that. I can't wait. Everyone, I mean, the populations in that are more south from Michigan are already emerging. And I can't wait until the populations up here emerge too, and the party gets started. So, hi Zach, how's it going? Hi Walter. Hi Frank. Walter, are you saying hello from Periscope out of curiosity? Are you one of those lucky people who did an update um, so recently, so you're still able to log on? Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, hi Frank, hi David, how did... Uh, Laughing, not quite, but I have this almost like a cowbell. Oh, there's two spittle bugs. Would you look at that? So, um, to kind of get us started, and then I'll talk about brood eggs happily. Andrew, hello, how are you? Andrew, would you eat a cicada given if given the opportunity? Um, reaching over here, okay. So, we're gonna look at this. Spittle bug. I will flip the camera around to show you guys up close. Uh, the spittle bug. I was debating whether to bring it underneath the dissection scope inside. And then for now, I think I just, I don't know, feeling kind of tired today, probably from the heat. It's 88 degrees here, and that's the hottest it's been yet. So I think my body is acclimating. And so I figured we'll look at it in situ, in the place where it is living and not. Um, not break down the door for today. So so look. So maybe later we'll this is fun what's inside. Um, where are you? Where are you, blue velvet? Depends on how it's seasoned, says Andrew. Good answer. Fair answer. Like anything, any food you want it to be seasoned to your liking. Uh Nico, hello. And David Dunn, hello over in California. Uh, and David Allen, welcome to the broadcast today. Hope you guys are doing well. So we'll take a look at this spittle bug. Have you guys? So Blue Velvet says um, they get spittle bugs. Do you guys have all of you here seen spittle bug? If so, say I in the chat. Or what else can you do in the chat? Let's put a zero in the chat. Put a bunch of zeros in the chat or O's in the chat, like you're making spittle in honor of our, the guest, the spittle bug. <laughs> Northwest Ohio, oh, you're not too far away from here. Never heard of them. Oh, Connection has the pickups. I, thanks for letting me know, moderator Frank, that. And I will switch to just some. All right, pausing a moment for the switch over from Wi-Fi to cellular. I'm hoping that will be helpful. All right, I think the change has occurred. Hopefully it's better. Um, Frank says, I've seen them in action. We got some spittle coming in from David and we have some spittle coming in from Blue Velvet. Awesome. And some, some a splash of water. Is there air in that water? Then it'll be a, some spittle coming from Andrew. Uh, and seeing them in action, like you've watched them like bubble up. So far, so good. Cool. Um, David Howden saying, I think so. If they are what I think we call them, the foam cuckoo spit as it appears at the same time as the bird of that name. Interesting. Interesting uh, combination there. Yeah, so this is in the found, so scientific name to help us unite those common names, which really vary not just from country to country, but from regions within a country. The scientific name which unites us all is Cecropidae. And another common name for them are frog hoppers because sometimes the adults look a little like wide and stout and they hop like a frog. Um, they're very similar to leaf hoppers, which is a different family, 
Um, I'm blanking out on the leaf hopper name right now. It's like secondality, secondality, I think. Um, something along those lines is leaf hopper. And they're very similar, but one of the distinguishing features are the spines on its hind legs. And with hopping bugs, that's why it's helpful to catch them and take a closer look so you can slow them down and take and um, be able to compare those hind legs to see if the spines are there. All right, I'm just going to wipe off this here, and then we'll take a look at this mosquito bugs that are right here with us. Mm, all right. They go through about one generation a year, and they overwinter, spittle bugs overwinter as eggs, which I feel like this is probably going to be a reason for gardeners to clear the plants when they get old and dried, but probably when you clear the, the stems and sheaths of plants in your yard, you might be clearing away the eggs of spittle bugs, which from a gardener's perspective, they tend to and end up on the side of being a bad bug because them, like many of the other plants, insects that eat plants, they, since they tap into the plant, it's like sticking, jamming a needle in all these different plants and there's contamination that occurs and viruses get spread. So um, they can sometimes cause viruses that stunt the growth of plants. And so they do fall into that category, but it's pretty cute how they make the spittle blow all these bubbles. Who doesn't like bubbles? And hi, Lu Lucia, or Lucia, thank you for the heart, super heart, and hope you're doing well. Oh, interesting. Frank says the German name translates, oops, sorry, translates to foam cicada. That's pretty cool. They are, they are close to cicadas in the tree of life. So that makes sense. And one reason why cicadas are probably so big is because when they're bigger, they're able to produce more sound. And those males are hollow, those male cicadas are hollow, and that allows them to really resonate and produce tons of sound. Okay, so let's take a look at these so we can, the spittle bugs love your herbs. Uh-oh, you and the spittle bugs love your her herbs, right? <laughs> um, is it problematic? Have, they, have your herbs gotten any diseases from them, Molly? All right. Macro lens on. This macro lens is a little bit different from the ones, other ones that I've used, so hopefully it serves us well. Okay. Deanna, hello. We're looking at a spittle bug. So here's a, this one's a little more unusual because it's underneath the leaf, and it has a big drop of water that's hanging from it too. So what's pretty cool about the, the way that they do this is that they're creating their own little microhabitat that protects them from predators. It protects them from desiccation, from drying out. So they're creating their own little microhabit by by causing all this spittle, by building up all the spittle. The way they do it is they turn them, they're upside down, their heads are downward, and then the spittle comes from their butt. Um, also, there's are some like um like mucusy producing glands back there that help with the foaming too on the seventh and eighth abdomen of the bugs and then the, so the foam comes out and kind of cascades down over their body and up to their head hi swift beats it is a portable home so create your own home and the materials come from tapping into the plant it's like you're blowing up your mattress in a way but instead of it being a mattress sorry sorry for the shakiness as i adjust um, I'm looking to put my my uh, tripod down so I can um, oops use my hands. I realize it's blurry. Sorry, guys. Um, so I can use my hands to manipulate the spittle so I can say hello to the resident, the resident spittler. All right, let's see if I can get this stable. All right, we'll see. Hopefully that'll work. Do I even need the macro lens? I'm not sure I do. Okay, I'll just try using it anyway. Okay, so I'll use it on this one. All right, so here, wow, this just kind of fell right over. Actually, I, I am gonna take this off. It's just gonna be easier. All right, 
thanks for bearing with me, with me everybody. Okay. <sighs> okay, I think what I'm going to do actually is take off this leaf and put the spittler into um, this container here so we can look at it a little more easily because otherwise, it's, I'm sorry if the shakiness bothered um, anyone who's visually sensitive because, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, this will be much easier. Okay. So I have now have our spittler inside of this container. <laughs> Thanks, Walter Mellon. That's a cool name. Best University to study bugs, the bug scope. Actually, um, since we're on this topic of, um, for those of you who are exp ex who are enjoying this or have been with the bug scope for a while, I'm applying for a science communication award through for my live broad live broadcasting that I've been doing. And if you're interested in writing a letter of recommendation for the bug scope for me to get this award, um, I've been doing the bug scope for the last four years. Then please send me a note because I need two recommenders. I have one and I need another person to write the other one. So, um, okay. Hi, Isa, can you tell swift beats why weeds are good? You'd be happy to do that, Deanna? Oh, cool, okay. I'll, then I'll get in touch with you, cool. And anybody else who's interested, let me know too, because one thing that's so tricky about live broadcasting is that like, it's such like, it's so fleeting. People can come and go and it's like a little hard to like sometimes be in touch with the community unless people say things or say hello or um, that sort of thing. So it's like, cool. All right, little aside, back to the um, spittle bug. And uh, Swift Beats was asking, oh, is it, this is from a different conversation, Deanna? Oh, really, Deanna? Cool. Wow, I did not know that. Hi, Lars, how's it going? Um, okay. And Andrew says, I hear sentences on your broadcast. I never hear anywhere else. Okay, two things. One, I think I'm going to go inside and continue the broadcast inside because my phone's, is it, is it coming through okay to you guys? It's a very hot day. My phone might be getting affected, affected by that. It's a little harder to see the comments outside because of how bright it is. So we might end up looking at our <laughs> spittle bug underneath the scope. Maybe we will just end up doing that today. Let me know. High five. It's fine. All right. I'll stay here for now. We'll see how it goes. Okay. And thank you, David. Cool. Um, do they usually say put in one location? Asks Frank. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm guessing that I'm not sure how long their life cycle is as a nymph because they're babies in here. This is a baby. This is like a baby crib. These spittle, they're like little babies spitting bubbles, but then they spittle so much bubbles that it covers their whole entire body. And interestingly, they're still able to breathe. And I'm not sure the physiology behind that, but maybe because they're small, diffusion still works okay for them. Not really sure the details on that. Um, but what's also interesting as I look down here, here, I'll flip the camera so you guys can see too. What's interesting about this spittle bug is that um, I can see shed exoskeletons. So it's a growing, healthy, happy little baby that we're about to look at. So, okay. Flipping the camera. All right. So here's our spittler. Actually, I'll use the pavement because then that'll give us more a dark, more contrast. There's an ant underneath the container <laughs> that was walking by. Okay, so here's here's our uh, here's the cradle. Here's the crib, literally kind of crib because it's a baby. Um, yeah. Um, what's it called? Let me go down. I'm a little far behind with the comments. Toby, how are you? Um, all right. So I'll put the macro lens on, and then we'll. We'll push aside the bubbles so we can take a look. You can kind of see the spittle bug right there. And you can also just run away a little bit. You can see the shed exoskeleton from when it 
grew a little bigger right here. Uh, I'll put the macro lens on. If the quality, audio quality changes a little much, let me know too. Okay. Okay, I'm getting closer. And so now we'll reveal the bubbles to see, say hi to the baby. All right. I can make a lot of spittle, 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 spittle. Nice and pale too, it's very soft. Let's try to run away, sorry baby. We just wanna say hi, then we'll put you back. Okay. See the little bubbles? I'll zoom in a little bit digitally. There's our little friend, bubble bubble. All, all these bubbles are homemade, everyone. So made by this little, and that you can see its eyes right there. See the red thing? That's its eye. Oops. Little spittle bug's eye. Come on out, little spittle bug. There it is. There's our little spittle bug friend. You can see its abdomen, all the segments on its abdomen. And you can see its eyes are red on either side of the front. You can see a little bit of its um, antennae, its tiny little antenna up there in the front. And I wonder if we'll get to see it make a bubble out of its butt, but maybe not because it's not, oh, wait, you can see a little bit of action back there. Um, hi, little baby. What do you think it it will taste it tastes like? I don't know. It probably just tastes like I probably wouldn't be able to taste it if I wanted to, to tell the truth. Let's zoom in a little more. Um, so yeah, there it is. There's our little, little friend moving around the bubbles with its butt. Um it must have really strong I wonder I wonder what it's um, abdomen muscles muscles are like because the way it moves it right now it looks like it has pretty good mobility and wiggles it around a bunch in the way that it lives yeah hi just wondering what's going on you can see it's a very soft bodied insect so it really needs those bubbles to keep it safe from drying up and look it's it's kind of going backing up right now is it blowing some air right there it's hard to say so hi little spittle bug there's its leg you can see this two legs on the side of its body and it's backing up a little bit into the bubbles. Wow, that it's <laughs> it's the back of its abdomen, the tip of its abdomen is so active. Deanna says, is this only native to North America? I don't think I've ever seen one. And uh, I think that David Howden can probably answer your question. I'm guessing you can you can find them around the world actually. Actually, I'm going to answer that because I've seen adults in Borneo, so I'm pretty sure this is some, a, a group you can find around. You'll find them especially in meadows, areas where there's a bunch of grasses and things like that. Sometimes you can find more than, than one of them in a spittle cluster. So, but yeah, bubble bath. Well, not really a bath because it's always in there, but I wish I could do that, said Andrea. Totally. Well, what a life. <laughs> um, looks like it wants to go back in. Yep. Yeah, pretty interesting, Linda. And here, uh, David is answering that we have a few species in the UK, more on the European mainland. Cool. Yeah, so that's our little spittle friend. Kind of wallowing back into the spittle probably wondering what's going on. And look, it's getting deeper in. Off it goes. I wonder how long it takes to make that all that spittle. I have no idea. Hi. Maybe I've just avoided things that look like spit. Yeah, it does just look like spit on a leaf. <laughs> but then he realizes a bunch of them and they're pretty much in similar locations on a plant. So for size reference again, 
Here we go. Here it is. And the other one that we did not open up and look at is right here. So here's my hand for size reference. They're pretty, they look, they do look like very sturdy bubbles. Very sturdy bubbles. A plus for construction on that one over there. <clears throat> um, the spittle, yeah, it's made of, it's made of uh, water and it's also made of, like there is a special gland that helps make it too on their abdomen, on the seventh and eighth uh, abdominal abdomens. They have a special, I don't know if there's a name for a gland, but uh, my bug book says that it's an epidermal gland on the eighth and seventh. I haven't seen them myself, but um, but yeah. Uh, anything else? They're like usually brown or grayish as adults too, and um, yeah, Cercropidae is the family name. So, uh, Lars says, I wonder how it evolved into this. Some early uncle spit on himself and started a snowball effect. No, it was effective, and the ones that spit on themselves, survive. So these are a group, which is the same group that cicadas are in, that um, leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, and yeah, aphids, if you're familiar with them, they tap, they use silets as well to tap into plants. These guys drink the, um, the xylem, which is the juices that go from the roots to the leaves of the plant. And then aphids drink the phloem mostly, which are the fluids and the channels that go that carry the nutrients from the leaves that that are obtained through photosynthesis and that go down back down um, the stem into the ground and they have slightly different properties but because they're drinking plant juices which are very diluted um, they need to siphon a lot of liquids and so with aphids they'll spit the liquids they like they exude the liquids from their butt it's called honeydew and then ants, that's where ants come in. And a lot of aphids are treated basically like livestock with ants. And there's some obligate relationships where the aphids rely on the ants. Um, for example, there's a really cool group of aphids called the uh, dandelion root aphid. So you probably have them in Europe because dandelions, at least the ones that I have in my yard here are native to Europe and invasive here, but brought here for food purposes. And that root aphid is pale because it doesn't really, color doesn't matter when you're underground in the darkness. And then they also have ants that tend to them. And if the ants didn't tend to them, they would drown in their honeydew, in their exudate, in their siphoned off like pee basically. So thank goodness the ants are there. And the ants also help protect them, protect the aphids from being eaten by other things. Um, so. How are you doing? Doing well. Hello, we feel stores. I um, David. Oh yeah, today's World Bee Day, so I'm not really talking about them, unfortunately. But we can talk about them because I said AMA is the other part of this broadcast. And happy World Bee Day! Remember that there's about I think it's 20,000 species of bees in the whole entire world. So not just the honeybee or bumblebees. There's many, many more than just those, and all of them contribute to pollination and um, keeping the world the wonderful way that it is. Thank you, bees. Um, yes, yeah, this is a golden tortoise beetle made by Amy Iverson, who, thought we, who connected with me on the bug scope a couple years ago, and when she found out it was my favorite insect, she made this. She's an artist who has the 1500 degrees studio in the Philadelphia area. And on the back is a host plant, marigold, for them. So, yeah. Oh, beetle over here. Where is it? I don't know where it went. Okay. There's molly bees, molly, molly bees too. What are those? Molly bee, is that you? Molly bee. Um, Lars says we just put beehives at work. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Speaking of wow, right when I said wow, the wow award came up. Thanks, David. <laughs> Coincidence. That's really cool, Lars. What was the inspiration or like what happened at work that like 
what was the motivation behind it out of curiosity for the bees that work? Um, and I see Molly B saying, I plant dwarf French marigold between and around my veggie plants to keep the aphids right. Nice. So you're, you are using some nice and like uh, strategic methods for dealing with your pests, not just straight up. Um, yeah, that's, that's really cool that you're using that, that you're using other plants as buffers. I hope it's serving you well. Is it working well for you, Molly? Um, here we go, an, an Ask Me Anything question coming in from Twitch. Hello, Krusky, asking, can I be Spider-Man if I get a bite from some insect? Um, well, I hope so. I hope I've been bitten by a lot of bugs and it hasn't happened to me yet, but here's for hoping. Um, Swiftbeat saying we need to do more with nature using technology and AI. What sort of things do you have in mind? Lars is saying we try to make insect hotels and beehives just to have the bugs out. That's awesome. I love that, Lars. Um, send me a picture. I'd love to see a picture of that. And one thing that I'm interested in doing with the bug scope is sharing more of what you guys are seeing and observing and experiencing. Um, I can't do that when I'm broadcasting from my phone like I am today, but when I'm back on my computer, I can bring up those pictures or little video clips. Actually, video clips haven't been working for me for um, perhaps, but maybe if I change the video format, maybe the video format is why. Um, but send me a picture of it, Lars. I'd love, love to see. And that's awesome. Well, Krusky, make sure you let me know if it happens to you. And I'd love to have you on as a guest sometime. To share your share your experience. Yeah, Andrew's Andrew on Haps. If you come over to Haps, Krusky, you can uh, Krusky, you can see all the comments that I'm responding to. Um, but I can still see your comment from here over on Haps. And Andrew's saying it has to be a radioactive insect. So I guess I haven't been bitten by a radioactive insect yet. I'm not sure if I want to take that risk, but maybe if the, the rewards are huge. Thanks for the super heart, David, and awesome Lars. Thanks. And Molly's read the marigolds, saying it has to be the fra fragrant French marigolds, though, which makes sense because it needs to um, release a lot of smells or volatiles to um, so that the it creates that wind or olfactory barrier that's enough to deter the aphids. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, I'm going to put our little guest fiddle bug back on the plant so they can make, they can tap back in and um, make a new home over here. Actually, maybe it'll, maybe I'll have it join the other spittle. I'll, I'll put it next to this other spittle bug. So maybe they can join forces. There you go, little spittle bug. Maybe they can be roommates, housemates, flatmates, or bu bubble mates. There we go. So. Sorry for the. We're back into the bubbles. Yay. Yeah, matchmaking. <laughs> Hopefully they're, they work well together as house, as roommates. So, okay. All right. Walter, are you still here? You wanted to talk about Brood X? I went out looking for brood eggs the other day and found a bunch and it's very exciting, very exciting. Um, I'm working with a local videographer to put together a, a little video on them. So I'm looking forward, it's gonna be a crunch week this upcoming week because the timing, we need to get the timing right. I have not had to get a pizza yet, unfortunately, and it might not happen until until next week, and I know the challenge for HAPS is this week, so that's too bad. Um, so in my mind, well, my housemate made pizza last night, and maybe if there's extra, I can put a cicada on it and eat it in time for the end of the week for the this week's HAPS, HAPS pizza challenge, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. I think it'd go really well. I think that it would be very delicious. And the tricky thing, of course, with eating cicadas is that I am, like, vegetarian vegan but like a little flexible so more in the plant-based category 
Um, so it doesn't really fit that, but it is. I, I do do these things um, partially for health reasons and also partially for environmental reasons. And eating insects is more sustainable than um, more sustainable than eating poultry or red meat or any other organism that creates its own heat. And so I do support entomophagy. So, all right. I'm going to go inside. Well, I can also just sit out here too. Yeah, are there any other questions you guys have AMA wise? Or we can talk about anything really, yeah. Sienna says, I'm vegetarian, mainly for environmental reasons, and I agree that eating insects is great for the environment. Nice. Yeah, that's why I'm like cool with trying it out and being a proponent of it and um, experiencing it so I can share my experience with it so other people can kind of know what they're getting into. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Oh, but Deanna says she doesn't want to eat insects. I have tried crickets. How is... Why? What happened with your cricket experience? If you want to hop on and join me, you're welcome to Deanna too. I've never done that here on um, my phone, but you could do it. Lars is saying barbecue grasshopper drum drumstick. Is that what you've had? You've had barbecue grasshopper drumsticks. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty tasty. You're on the sofa chilling. Oh, I understand that. I understand. <laughs> no problem. Oh, one thing I can share with you guys, although I don't know if my phone's going to like going into the sun, because I remember last year, I tried to do a broadcast on the thistle beetle, tortoise beetles, and my phone just totally died because it got too hot, and today's one of those days where that can happen again. But um, one thing that I love about the summer or the spring is that when you see bites on plants, they're new. So all of these like bites and the damage that I see on, oops, taking a moment to flip. All the damage that I see on like these thistle plants, for example, I know it's new. And that's very exciting to me because I'm like, oh, there must be a bug nearby. There must be an insect that's not too far away. Um, so I'll see if I can see one of the tortoise beetles um, around here somewhere. I did see some eggs. Where were the eggs that I saw? They're over here. I saw tortoise beetle eggs. They overwinter as adults. So when the spring comes around, they're up and ready to get out. So here, these ones are not tortoise beetles, but there are some other little bugs, buggies in here. Where'd they go? They ran away, of course. <laughs> Some insects are easier to live broadcast than other insects. That's just the way that it is. Is it over here? Not sure. So here's the lithrin that I was trying to show a moment ago. Right. Try to get the focus. Oh, right in there. Focus phone. Sorry, guys. It's not focusing. Oh. And it ran away. All right. Huh, okay. <laughs> I tried. Um, Deanna's saying, whoops. I have the problem that the insects have faces and they look too bug-like to seem edible to me. I hate, I hate crickets to convince other people to try them for a science experiment. Nice. <laughs> um, what if you chop if, you, if someone chopped the heads off or if it was in the meal that you were gonna eat and you just didn't see parts of it, would you eat it then? Would that work for you? Speaking of aphids, there's some on here, but they're probably too small to show you guys. Whoa, it's a weird looking one, but it's also like really, really small. Okay. How dare they run away? That's right. This is your moment of fame, your 15 minutes of fame opportunity right here, little bugs, and you're running away from the camera. No. Uh, David said he tried crickets too. They were okay, but not rushing for a second taste. Yeah, crickets are not the most, I, I didn't find them to be the most exciting thing to eat unless they had chocolate on them. 
so I do encourage you guys to try um, something else. And cicadas are uh, really delicious. They are they are tasty. So I do advise that you give cicadas a try. Um, cool. Deanna says, I think if I didn't see the face or know about it, I'd be fine. Like cricket flower, I can definitely get behind. Cool. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like fun when you can see it or like more sensational, but you don't really have to see it to eat it. And there are companies that are making cricket flower and other types of flowers like that. Blinky Bill says, I used to eat birdie beetles. What are, what are, what's that? I don't even know what that is. Is that like a, a character or something of some kind? I'm not sure what that is. Can't help but start looking for bugs. Actually, I think I will try to show. Oh, it's not there anymore. The interesting thing that was over here. Hmm. Oh, well. OK, chocolate. Oh, is it just like a chocolate company or a chocolate brand or like a Chocolate, fully chocolate beetle that doesn't have real insect in it, Blinkyville. Mo oh, Molly, so you have cicadas in your backyard, the periodical ones? And the little gray foxes have been eating them? Oh, that's so cool. Have you gotten footage? Are you are you live streaming them? Will you live stream, stream that for us? That sounds really cool. Toby asks, what's the death bug? The golden tortoise beetle, after the Issa beta bug. Just kidding. But the golden tortoise beetle is one of them. But it's really hard to pick a favorite. How can you ask a mother to ask which their, which child is their favorite, especially when there are millions of wonderful choices? <laughs> Your best bug is a ladybug. Frank also loves ladybugs. They are pretty cool. They're also, it's funny because they have such this like cute, sweet little bug reputation. Um, in the world when they're like really vicious, intense predators. They just tear up, they just tear up and destroy um, the aphids that they come across. So they're pretty, pretty intense. All right, I'm gonna go one more time to see if I can find a tortoise beetle. The tricky thing is I'm barefoot. I'm barefoot and I see some frass, some bug poop. So there's I see some eggs. I'll show you guys the eggs. That's a bug. It's just an egg form. <laughs> okay. The tricky thing is that I'm barefoot and the thistle things are like really pokey. So. All right. So these. Is that? Actually, I might just. No, I think it is. Here are eggs right here. Those are eggs. They might even be covered with frass for all I know, but those are tortoise beetle eggs on the underside of the leaf. But I don't see any tortoise beetles who can, I don't see any potential parents anywhere, but oh well. And then over here. Yeah, no tortoise beetles. I don't see any tortoise beetles. Oh well. Flipping the camera back. Um, I'll try it that night though. Oh, that's tricky. Praying mantis for David. Nice. Use a beta beetle. Oh yeah, my, my other name can be that. <laughs> um, God. No life forms inside the chocolate. But there might be because there are regulations that are like only this many bug parts can be found in, in for every 10 pounds of chocolate. So it could be, but it's not a feature, huh? Re Blinky Bill's chocolate beetle. Yeah, praying mantises are really fun. Um, oh, I do have some, I have some. I'll show you guys them soon. And maybe, maybe I'll show them to you. Maybe I'll show them. Maybe I'll end this broadcast and start a new broadcast right after, right now, and show you guys some of the baby praying mantises that I have under the scope. Maybe I'll do that. All right. Bye, Diana. Thanks for joining. All right. I'll do that. I'm going to go see. 
how the baby praying mantises are and um, I need to get them some food. Food is tricky when you have a baby praying mantis because they're so, so tiny. That's why I'm hoping that the fruit flies will show up soon. Um, yeah, they're not native praying mantises, unfortunately. So we don't have those over here, but oh well. All right, yeah, I'm gonna end the broadcast and if I oh, have yeah, baby mantis suit, wait. No. Baby mantis do 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 baby mantis do 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 yep. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna go and check on the baby mantises and try to get some food and then might start another broadcast on them. So, bye guys, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day. <sighs> Cheers. <laughs> thanks for joining. <laughs>